The Daily Mail has uh, this report the Satanic Temple has set up a display of a sparkling demonic ram's head in the Iowa State House as an expression of religious freedom. Alongside more traditional menorahs and Christmas trees, the group have uh, the group has, has erected an altar topped with candles, a large banner, and a ram figure with skull covered in mirrors, a red cloak, and a wreath. The temple reportedly went through all the correct administrative channels for the display and only had their original request to use a real goat's skull denied. So there was no attempt um, to turn them down or anything like that or to fight over this. They were just given exactly what they wanted, um, aside from putting you know, the carcass of an actual animal in the state house, but everything else they got. Founder of the Satanic Temple, Lucian Graves, told uh, KCCI, we're going to really relish the opportunity to be represented in a public forum. We don't have a church on every street corner. This display will be up for 14 days and is protected under the First Amendment supposedly, but not everyone is pleased with it. Iowa resident Shelley Flockhart is extremely cons- concerned, organized a group prayer near, near the display on Wednesday. She told KCCI, I hope that people realize spiritual warfare is real, that there are evil satanic forces that are trying to infiltrate our state. She said Christians must spiritually fight against it and added, it's a very dark, evil force, and I truly hope uh, people know how to battle that. So, um, that's what's happening in Iowa. Iowa's governor, Kim Reynolds, is uh, not happy about this, and she's spoken out about it. Let's watch. Governor Kim Reynolds is denouncing a satanic holiday display at the State House. The Iowa Atheist and Free Thinkers Group and the Satanic Temple set up the display. It says that all religions should be represented in a public forum. But Reynolds said in a statement this morning she finds this display objectionable. She says the best way to respond is to pray over the Capitol and to recognize the nativity scene on a display there instead. Now, I think there are other ways to respond. We'll get to that in a second. Yesterday, um, in sort of an interesting detail here, during a town hall, Ron DeSantis was asked about this. And um, he said that, uh, that some of this traces back to the Trump administration. Let's listen. So it's interesting. I, I, I heard this and then I was like, well, how did it get there? Is that even a religion? And lo and behold, the Trump administration gave them approval to be under the IRS as a religion. So that gave them the legal ability to potentially do it. So I don't know what the legislature, what they have, they analyzed it, but it very well may be because of that ruling under Donald Trump that they may have had a legal leg to stand up. My view would be that's that's not a religion that the founding fathers were trying to create. Um, but I do think that IRS ruling, uh, I was really surprised to see that they did that. Okay, obviously this is a disgrace. Uh, just, I mean, obviously it should not be allowed. You simply don't allow Satanists to set up a satanic altar inside your state capitol. Um Building, I mean, that that's the kind of thing that shouldn't need to be said. And I don't give a damn what argument you make. I don't care about whatever right you're trying to supposedly claim. Oh, but we have a right to. I don't care if you think that. Like, that should be the response. When they go through the administrative channels and say, we, would, we have a right to do this. I don't care what you think your rights are. It's not happening. You just don't do it. And let them take you to court. Take it all the way to the, to the Supreme Court. But you don't just do it. <laughs> you don't just allow, do it without putting up a fight. And that's what happened here. There was no fight. The only fight was, okay, you can't put an actual goat skull, but everything else is fine. Now, uh, c- consider a few things here, a few points in no particular order. First, it should go, it should go without saying what, what uh, Ron DeSantis said there is correct. Obviously, the founding fathers would have never tolerated this. They obviously never intended to give Satanists the right to set up satanic temples inside government buildings. And anyone who tells you otherwise is a moron or a liar or or both. Probably both. Not only would they not have tolerated this, but they would have arrested anyone who even attempted to do something like this. Okay, so they were not the live and let live hippies that they're made out to be for the most part. Second, Satanism is not a valid religion in the theological sense of the term. Okay, it's an anti-religion. I mean, it's designed to be the opposite of a religion. 
And for most of these self-professed Satanists, it's meant to be nothing more than a troll of religion. Like, they don't even consider themselves to be worshiping Satan, really, and they'll be the first to tell you that. They are worshiping Satan, even though they don't uh, consciously think they are. But they'll be the first to tell you that it's, it's not that that's not what they're actually doing. They don't think. Um, it, it is a it is a mockery of religion. The whole thing, all of it, is set up to be not just of religion, by the way, but of Christianity specifically. The whole thing is set up to be the kind of the inverse of Christianity. It is a parody, um, a mockery of Christianity. Okay, so Satanism is not like some other world religion. It's not like Hinduism or something. Satanism is a mockery of Christianity specifically. It is not a valid uh, religion unto itself. And and third, it's interesting that atheists are behind this. Um, you know, a- atheist groups are the ones who have, have pushed this. And atheists are on extremely shaky ground here, really non-existent ground. Because they're claiming that Satanists have the right to set up, uh, you know, the the satanic altar in the Capitol. But, I mean, what is a right? Where do rights come from? I'm always harping on this point because it's an important point that it's a question that's never answered in these conversations. But if somebody is saying, I have the right to do that, says who? What do you mean you have the right to do it? Who says you have the right to do that? What do you mean you have the right to do it? And, and what if the government just, what, what if the Iowa had just said, no, you can't. You don't have that right. We don't recognize it. Pure Talk has you covered for the holidays with a free Moto G 5G phone. No gimmicks, no trade-in necessary. Just sign up for Pure Talk's unlimited talk, unlimited text, and 15 gig data. Uh, you can get all this for $35, and you get the Moto G 5G phone for free. But here's the deal. You need to move fast because these phones are almost gone. So if your current phone is on life support, upgrade for free with Pure Talk. The new Moto G 5G uh, phone boasts a two-day battery life, an exceptional quad-pixel camera, and a whole lot more. Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G ma- network at half the price. So make the switch today. It's an easy choice to make. Just go to puretalk.com slash walls to get this exclusive offer and select the plan that's right for your family. Remember, Pure Talk gives you America's most dependable 5G network at half the price. So make the switch today. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh to claim your free Moto G 5G phone with a qualifying plan. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Of course, the October 15th tax deadline has uh, long since come and gone. I know many of you might be dreading the stress of filing your taxes. Filing your taxes can be a long, excruciating process to say the least, but If you fail to file, you'll start to pile penalties on your tax debt, and that's why you need to check out Tax Network USA. The team at Tax Network USA has a track record of success. They've reduced tax debt for numerous clients, totaling over a billion dollars. Whether you're looking at a $10,000 or a $1 million tax debt, they can help you with a settlement. doesn't matter if you haven't filed in one year, five years, even a whole decade. Tax Network USA is equipped to secure the best settlement for you. The expert attorneys and tax professionals at Tax Network USA can help resolve all tax cases, no matter how they started. Don't let tax debt control your life any longer. Take the first step towards resolving your tax issues by visiting taxnetworkusa.com slash Walsh. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Walsh today. There are only two possibilities. Either rights are things that are invented arbitrarily by people, you know, or they are, as the founders believed, endowed by a higher power, by the creator, by God. It's one or the other. So, but, but if rights are endowed by God, then we have to ask whether God endowed us also with the right to practice Satanism in government buildings. Does anybody want to step up and say we have a God-given endowed right to practice Satanism, you know, inside the state capitol? That's going to be a very difficult case to make. But that, of course, is not even the case that atheists would make. They can't talk, talk about God-given rights. So they would say that rights are human inventions, that they're, they're arbitrary human constructs. They don't have any real reality. They're just ideas that we came up with. There's no fundamental innate reality of a human right. It's, it's, just, it's, it's a concept. It's a system that we have invented. Well, if that's the case, then you wouldn't be able to complain if Iowa had simply said, no, you don't have the right to set that up here. Because if government decides your rights, and and then if the government says you don't have that particular right, 
It's incoherent to insist that you do, because insisting that you do is to appeal to a power higher than the government. But on the atheist view, there is no power higher than the government. They're the ones who decide this. And so if they say, if they say you don't have that right, then you don't. It's it. It doesn't exist. So then your argument would be, you know, then if the government is saying you don't have a certain right, it's totally incoherent for you to say, oh, but I really do have that right, and you should recognize it. Instead, what you would be saying is, I should have that right. You'd be saying, you're right, I don't have that right, because rights are arbitrary human constructs invented by the government on my worldview because I'm an atheist, because uh, their rights can't be anything but that. Um, so I don't have that right, but, but, but I should. You know, that, that's a right that we should invent for me. But that's not what the Satanists and the atheists are arguing. And that, and that, and that, because they recognize that that's a, pretty, that's a much weaker argument. I mean, you say, yeah, I don't have it, but I should. Because then everyone could say, no, you shouldn't. I mean, or maybe you think you should, but we don't care. And finally, to return to a theme from yesterday and uh, really from every other day on this show. You know, as conservatives, we do not have to tolerate everything. Okay, it may come as a shock, uh, but we don't have to tolerate everything. In fact, we shouldn't. In fact, our whole thing is supposed to be that we don't. Because we're in the business of conserving. Conserving what? The right to practice Satanism? The right to turn state houses into satanic temples? Is that what we're trying to conserve? No, we're conserving God-given rights. We're conserving truth, sanity, common sense, tradition. And this flies in the face of all of that. You know, which is why we should say no, and we can say no. Yeah, conservatives have to get finally past this juvenile, like adolescent, libertarian thing. This live and let live. Well, we can't tell people what to do. You know, just do, you do your thing and I do my thing. Let's not bother each other. We'll stay out of each other's way. We got to get past that. That childish, half-baked way of viewing the world, we, we got to get over it. Um, and that means that in situations like this, y- you can do what you know is the right thing. Like anyone who looks at a satanic temple being set up um, in a you know in a, in a state like anyone look looks at that and, and it's like that that doesn't seem right okay that just doesn't seem that does not seem it, it doesn't seem like that should be happening that's that's common sense that's, that's just a basic moral intuition we all know that that shouldn't be happening but conservatives for so long have convinced themselves that they have to defy their own moral intuition for the sake of uh, of liberty or whatever. But, but, that, but that is based on a very mistaken, uh, very, as I said, juvenile, sort of childish idea of what liberty is. And the juvenile, childish idea of liberty is that liberty means you, everyone can just do what they want. Which, which, is, which, is, uh, you know, which is like what your teenager might think freedom is. Some of the founding fathers thought that freedom is. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.